What up, Roller Derby World? Pearl Jam here from Angel City Derby. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video about some things that I think make me a successful jammer that I think could be beneficial to any skater at any level. Um, this also doesn't just pertain to jammers, it could pertain to blockers as well. Um, these things really helped me, and especially when I just started out in D1 skating, they really helped sculpt the skater I am today. And honestly, these three rules I could still definitely go over every now and again and <laughs> I'm guilty of not following all of these rules but I do think they're great um, rule number one is knowing the rules uh, when I first started playing roller derby I used to carry around a laminated version of the WFTDA rules and Every day, um, specifically before practices, I would highlight a rule and I would go over it and I'd read it and I'd read it to other people in my team and ask them what they thought about the rule, talk about it, because there's always little loopholes, like for instance the whole one hand out of bounds, one hand inbound, so if one hand's out of bounds you can get up and go and you don't have to recycle around the person that hit you out because you're not technically out, you're just down. Um, so I think it's really important to go over those rules and I think it could be super beneficial to talk to refs, um, NSOs, or even go to scrimmages and NSO, um, maybe ref at a local scrimmage team to get some hands-on experience. It's really good to get those different types of perspectives. Um, I think you could learn from both sides, skating more and also on the um, more nerd crew side, <laughs> the NSO referee sort of side of things because there's always different rules to learn from and you know even today I still learn rules that I'd never even heard of before as soon as I think I know everything turns out I don't um, <laughs> which is whatever uh, moving on to the rule number two that I like to follow is staying on the track you'd be surprised what staying on the track can do like for instance if you're at the front of the pack and your blockers are really locking it down on that opposition jammer in the back and you get hit out of bounds you're losing that advantage that you and your team worked hard to get so a lot of people are like what advantage are you talking about well if I'm at the front of the pack I can push them eventually I can eventually push them out of play um, hopefully getting them to string out um, it also puts if I get hit out of bounds, it puts my pack at risk because then I have to recycle most likely all the way behind them, especially if my reset isn't very quick. Um, it's kind of like a mini power jam. It's between like three to ten seconds depending how long it takes me to reset, um, which isn't fair to me or my team. Um, and like I said, with the whole pack advantage, if you end up getting stuck at the back of the pack because you got hit out of bounds, eventually your team might lose that opposition jammer because they that jammer might push them out of play, they get lead, etc. The other thing is that if you are stuck at the back or at the front or wherever you're at and your blockers lose the opposition jammer and they come back to play offense what good are you if you're off the track your team can't play offense for you they can't help you if you're off the track so help them help you um, and vice versa you want to help them too because if you're off the track you can't do anything for them like this has happened to me a few times where I've had to play a little bit of jammer D nothing too crazy but like for instance if I'm stuck in the back of the pack and maybe I'm down two blockers maybe even three so I only have one or two blockers on the track they're gonna want me to hold the space wherever I'm at whether that's the inside the outside so that way that opposition jammer, when they come around, they're forced to go to that one or two, maybe even three blockers on the track. So that way it's less work for them, especially if there is only one or two of them. They're not going to be able to cover the whole width of the track. So you want to be able to hold that position to either stop that jammer or force her or them to go to your blockers. Um, so help them help you and help yourself. Um, it's really important that teamwork, which kind of brings us to rule number three, which is knowing your teammates, knowing your strategies. How can you benefit your blockers? It's not just about like your blockers trying to get you out. How can you help them as well? Especially on jam starts. If you're on a jam start and you have one 
player on your team that's really good at offense, but that opposition jammer is lined up right behind them. You're not helping yourself and you're not helping them because maybe, maybe they're a great defensive player and it's fine, but there are sometimes situations where you know that this particular person is better on offense or this particular person's better on defense. So how can you position, position yourself off that line to force that opposition jammer where you want them to go? Um, because like I said, if there's one particular person who's really good at offense, you definitely want them to play offense for you and not end up in a defensive wall and force anyone to do anything they're uncomfortable with. Um, I do think it's important to be able to do things um, more fluidly, but also at the same time, there are people who prefer different positions. And if they do so, I think you should help them because it's also going to benefit you in the long run. Um, also with uh, knowing your teammates and the strategies, what good are you if you don't know any of the strategies? I feel like all of my 2017 season, I wasn't really in tune with any of our strategies or kind of our plans. I was just so overwhelmed by everything um, that I... This year, I really learned a lot with learning our strategies, learning the players, and learning what to expect from each person. 2017, I was watching footage, and there were so many times where my blockers did so much for me, and it just went straight over my head, or I didn't even notice it, or whatever the case was. And it's because I just wasn't aware, and I didn't take the time to learn our strategies and learn our teammates, um, which hurt me and hurt my team in the long run. So it's important to know your team's strategies and what to expect from your teammates, especially if you know like certain people are coming from you. And you know, it's also like, like I've been saying, what, the more you know about them, the more you know about what you guys are trying to do, the more you can ask for help. Um, all of 2017, I didn't know how to ask for help because I didn't know what I didn't know what the problem was. I didn't know if it was me, I didn't know if it was them, but if you're in tune on the same level as them, knowing their strategies, knowing them, as well as them knowing you, you can communicate better and ask for help and they can ask for help and they can ask things of you. It makes it a lot more fluid when everyone knows everyone and kind of what to expect from one another. That team bonding is really real. Like knowing your teammates, being friends with your teammates, being able to work with them and understand them and know how they they think and what their moves are going to be are only going to benefit you and them. The ultimate goal is to win, right? As a team, not as an individual person. You know, there are some people who are like, I'm a jammer. I won this for our team. That's not true. We win it together. We lose it together. And that's why it's important to just to do your best to be there for them as it is for them to be there for you. Um, I know it can sometimes feel really... Um, isolated as a jammer because you're not constantly working in a wall, but you have to realize that you are working in a wall. You're working with a wall. You're working with your team. You're not by yourself and you never will be. Um, so <laughs> that was kind of a lot. I'm sorry, but um, those are my three rules that I think are really important and I kind of live by them. Um, I could definitely listen to them a little bit more than I do. Um, but, you know, everyone has room to grow and everyone has room to learn. And I'm definitely in that position just as much as anyone else. And, you know, some things work for some people and some don't work for others. And that's totally fine. You're going to find the things that work for you just like I'm finding the things that are working for me. Um, so leave comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, add to this list. Subtract from this list. Whatever whatever you want. I want, I want to hear it. Talk to me. <laughs> Thanks for listening.